Good morning everyone, my name is Jeremy Glo again, and I'm going to present a preliminary study on the estimation of wind turbine noise emergence by non-negative matrix factorization. This work is carried out with the participation of Benoît Gauvreau et David Cotier from UMRAE and Arthur Finez, Arthur Petit et Colin Le Bourda from NG Green. In France, the sound emergence of wind turbine must not exceed regulatory threshold levels. These emergencies are calculated as a difference between the sound level of ambient noise when wind turbines are operating and residual noise which correspond to all the other sound sources. To ensure to not exceed this threshold, the operation of the wind turbines can be limited by a curtailment plant which limits the electric production. However, this residual noise fluctuates over time, which may make the curtainment plan uh, inadequate with either regulatory threshold being exceeded or an overly restrictive plan resulting in more production losses. It is possible to update this plan with residual noise measurements by stopping the machine, but these measures generate new production losses and remain too punctual in time to be satisfying. Consequently, we propose a tool to estimate continuously the sound emergence of wind turbine. The, the estimator is based on the extraction of the wind turbine nose from the ambient nose with the help of source separation. With this extracted component, it will be possible to estimate the sound emergence of nose. With this tool, we will be able to adapt the curtainment plan continuously and then to optimize the operation of the wind turbine over time. And to perform this source separation, we are using the non-negative matrix factorization. First, I will introduce the non-negative matrix factorization framework. Then I will present the different corpuses used for this experiment. And then I will present the experiment and the result we got. So now, non-negative matrix factorization. In the audio domain, NMF consists in approximating an amplitude spectrogram of an audio signal, V, by the product of uh, two matrices, W and H. W is called a dictionary composed of K audio spectra. So in the example here, we have three uh, elements in our dictionary. And H is an activation matrix will represent, which represents the temporal variations of each spectrum. Each of these matrices, each of these matrix is non-negative, which means that only additive combinations are possible. The, the approximation is done by minimizing a cost function, which is expressed as the beta divergence between V and the product WH. And an iteration process make it possible to converge to a solution uh, with update algorithm that change the shape of W and H, which depends on the choice of the beta divergence related to the choice of a beta value that we can see in the expression. Here we will focus on an adaptation of this method, thresholded initialized NMF, which had already been applied to road traffic noise. This method consists in considering an initial dictionary, W0, focused on the source of interest, here the one turbine noise, and this initialization allows to focus on the source of interest. Then we update W0 on the spectrogram V, with also the matrix H, of course. Then, after all the iteration, we have a classification step on W and H in order to extract only the one turbine elements because some initial elements in the update from, uh, may, have be, may have been uh, modified and may describe other sound sources. And this classification is done by computing the cosine similarity between the initial dictionary, W0, and the final dictionary, W. This indicator generates a value between 0 and 1, 1 for a perfect similarity between the two elements, and 0 means a very strong diversity, the vector are orthogonal. Then we define the uh, wind turbine elements uh, as the elements with which have a cosine similarity superior to a threshold. Uh, to do so, uh, it is now necessary to build corpuses to generate this dictionary W0, but also a corpus of ambient noise measurement. So now, the different corpuses. For NMF, we collect one turbine noise measurement at a wind farm in France, in Chep. These measurements were made according to the EIC measurement protocol during stop and start measurement. 
the most stable and emerging periods were selected in order to be sure to best define our sound sources. In the end, we obtained more than 1400 spectra uh, expressed in third octave bands from 31.5 Hz to 2 kHz. And instead of considering all of these spectra, we reduced their dimension using a Kamin algorithm to a few elements to avoid redundant information, but also to reduce computa computation time. For the purpose of ambient noise measurement, instead of considering in-site measurement, we decided to simulate them in order to have a better control of their composition. The simulation process allows us to know the exact sound emergence, which is not possible in practice. So to do so, we collected measurements made on the same wind farm, but here at 300 meters from the wind turbines uh, with the most emergent period as possible. The residual noise is captured at a different point during here the shutdown of the machine this time. And we also had diff added a different punctual residual noise events in order to bring diversity and some dynamic. The construction of the scenes is done as following. First, uh, we select a 10 minute one turbine noise sample, and I said 10 minutes because it is the duration of our scene. The residual noises is built by summing the residual background noise with the sound events. And then uh, the one turbine noise and the total residual noise are summed together to generate the ambient uh, noise. And this sum is done by calibrated uh, the residual noise in order to follow an indicator, the signal to residual ratio S2R. It is the difference between the one turbine and the residual statistical sound levels. And this indicator is defined from minus 9 dB to 9 dB. And to conclude, for this preliminary study, we designed 30 scenes, 10 minutes long with a time step of one second. Uh, sound levels are A weighted, expressed in Pascal and in third octave bands, with the same frequency range that the dictionary. So now, the experiment. To summarize, we have the NMF part, uh, with the corpus of more than 1400 spectra, reduced with the Kamins algorithm to obtain W0. TI NMF allows us to obtain the wind turbine signal as output and thus to estimate the sound emergence. To do this, we test several beta divergences, 0, 1, 2, different dictionary dimension, K, and several T values, uh, with 0 0.01 step, and we perform uh, during the iteration process 100 iterations. In parallel, we have 30 design scenes, each of them de defined for several S2R values. And finally, with the emergence estimated by NMF and the exact emergence, we can compute an estimation error through the mean absolute error uh, display here, and BS is also added to help us to interpret the behavior of the method. So instead of summarizing in detail all the results, I only summarize the optimal combination according to each beta value, 0, 1, 2, on the whole corpus. It can be observed in the table uh, that all three settings propose similar mean absolute error with similar approaches. It means a large number of bases in the dictionary and a high threshold value. The setting with beta equal 1 being the best, we will focus on it and then we, detail, we can detect this global error uh, for each uh, value of the is to error. So here, each bar corresponds to the mean absolute error on the 30 scene for each value of s to r, and we had on the right the bs. We can clearly see two distinct parts, the first one where NMF overestimates the sound emergence, and the second part where the method underestimates the emergence. We, rem we remark that the error increases strongly, especially at S2R equal uh, plus 9 dBA, where the error exceeds 3 dBA. But except this case, the results are satisfying because they do not exceed 2 dBA from uh, minus 9 to 6 dBA, which is at 6 dBA equivalent to a sound emergence of around 7 dBA. So it is far superior to the limit of the regulation. 
We can detail this behavior by looking the cosine similarity on the left, sorted in descent order, and on the right, the mean absolute error and the bias. In blue is still the result for the emergence, and in red, the error on the one turbine noises uh, between the ex estimated and the exact sound level, uh, as it is the direct output variable of NMF. We can conclude from these figures that when as to R is positive, the threshold value is too high and miss some elements, which produce a small underestimation of the one turbine noise, less than 1 dBA. But as, as, uh, as the as to R is positive, the estimation of the emergence is here very sensitive, which provoke very these high uh, errors on the emergence. But in opposite, when as to R is negative, the fixed threshold is in the end too low and consider too many elements as one turbine, which provoke here an zero overestimation. But this behavior is finally compensated as the one turbine noise is not predominant in these scenes. The error on the emergence is then low, which explains why we perform well on these cases. So to conclude, uh, we presented here a first sound emergence estimator of one turbine noise based on a source separation with non-negative matrix factorization. Uh, to test this method, we use a first set of simulated ambient noise measurements. The experience carried out allowed to test the capacities of NMF to adapt to this sound source and also to define the first optimal setting. We saw that the errors were mainly satisfying as they were inferior to 2 dBA. However, TINMF generate over or underestimation depending on the one turbine noise predominance because of the fixed threshold and because of the sensitivity. Uh, for instance, uh, for S2R su superior to 6 dBA, we saw that the emergence estimation is very sensitive. Uh, despite a low error of on the one turbine noise. And uh, we are looking now at different approaches uh, to improve these results, such as adding constraint and, uh, on activation or considering two threshold value to be more sense adaptative, for instance. Finally, of course, we need to test this method on more complex and more complete uh, corpuses, taking uh, into account, for instance, uh, propagation effects in the scene and in NMF. And also we have to investigate the composition of the dictionary and its robustness of uh, its shape for different wind farms. Thank you for your attention.